I'ma crush it. Welcome to Unsung. I'm Anthony Walker, your host. And in this episode, we're coming to you from the sandy beaches of the beach. And by that, I mean the studio because it is cold outside. Unsung is wrapping its third season with jam-packed episodes over the next month or so, and we hope you will tune in as we span the area bringing you heartfelt stories, community impact, and ways for you to get involved. We'll get right into this week as Unsung visits a little art program that could in Greensburg, the critical issue of homeless teens in our GLBT community, and how artists are tackling violence at the Society for Contemporary Craft. But first, as always, Let's take a look at the area nonprofits. Society of Contemporary Craft opened Enough Violence Artists Speak Out, featuring the work of 14 contemporary artists from around the world. Enough Violence investigates the impact violence has on our lives and the role that arts can play in restoring peace and security. The exhibition offers a call to action, encouraging individuals to change attitudes of aggression or indifference by coming together through artistic expression. Unsung talks with Janet McCall, the executive director. We're in the exhibition gallery with a special show, Enough Violence, Artists Speak Out. This is a show that we put together in response to a conversation that we had almost four years ago with a gentleman who is a former board member and he has devoted his life to research on juvenile delinquency and what causes children to get involved in crime, either as perpetrators or victims. I think if you look at the innocent children who are playing in the gallery and visitors walk in initially and think, oh, how charming, and they look again and then they see that the little boy in the back is holding a gun and the children are raising their arms as if they're being held up. And it really reminds you that children mimic what they see. We've had uh, powerful responses from visitors who have come in and after viewing the artwork have sat down at our solution station where we have art supplies and paper and invite people to write their story or um, post something in response to the problem and uh, just some really amazing experiences that uh, people have shared with us and they found the show a, a healing opportunity. We are located in the Strip District at 21st and Smallman in the Produce Terminal building. It's very accessible. We're free of charge. It's also very informal. We have a drop-in studio where families can come. We are free of charge at all times. They can see the show, make art. We have resources for schools. We put together a, a curriculum guide that has a lot of information about the um, the artists who are in the show, the works of art. So for teachers or families, it's a way to use the guide to have some very thoughtful and important conversation with young people about the topic of violence. We have a website that we've put together, enoughviolence.net is the address, and we invite people to share their stories on the website. We have a catalog online on that website, a lot of information about the programs that we've been doing in the community. We are at www.contemporarycraft.org. That's our main website. Steeltown Entertainment Project kicked off the fifth annual Film Factory competition. By the end of this year's competition, Steeltown will have given away over $150,000 to regional filmmakers through the Film Factory contest, which has led to the production of over a dozen short films shot here and helped nurture a new generation of original voices who are part of the growing independent film community in Pittsburgh. This year, Steel Town will give out up to $30,000 to filmmakers to make their short films. In addition, it will also unveil its new digital media community showcase, which will post the top 20 script finalists in their crowdfunding campaigns and help connect these individuals to others in the local filmmaking community. Find more information at the address on your screen. A comprehensive study was released recently indicating that family rejection and abuse are contributing to increased homelessness among LGBT teens. Lindsay Sickler of the Gay and Lesbian Community Center joins us now. Well, the GLCC has been around for over 30 years. Uh, it started actually as a phone line in the back of somebody's house. Um, and we slowly grew and grew and grew until we ended up 
here. We are actually a, an entire spectrum community center, uh, but we do have a lot of youth programs and that's actually directly correlated to the collaborations that we have with other service providers in the community. So the big program that we have here that um, I actually came to talk about today is called the Service Access for Youth, Youth Engaged in Service. Um, this is a collaborative project. It is not just a GLCC's project. It's something that's worked on very actively by the GLCC, PERSAD Center, uh, Homeless Children's Education Fund, Action Housing, UPMC Adolescent Health and Medicine, Healthcare for the Homeless, uh, Downtown Outreach Center, Service Access for Youth, Youth Engaged in Service, or Say Yes, uh, actually started because um, a local program called The Hub uh, had lost its funding. And The Hub provided services that included a shower, a place to sleep, and things like that for youth in crisis downtown. Now, it was not generally queer specific, um, but when we found out about that, we decided that something needed to be done. I learned very quickly uh, how fast crises happen with housing. Um, my first client uh, was a young 18, almost 18 year old, uh, who had been beaten up at home because he, his brothers found out he was gay. Um, and he didn't have anywhere to go and he was out in the middle of a very not networked community. There wasn't, wasn't buses that ran very well or anything and um, the only thing I could do was stay on the phone with him all night. Uh, so I did. Until uh, so we could get him somewhere, he sat at the bus stop and waited until the bus could come and then went to somewhere he could, he had support. I have met folks that uh, you know, were well into their 20s that, you know, have kept their, their um, either their gender identity or sexual orientation kind of under wraps and somebody blew it up. You know, some status on Facebook, because young adults don't think, uh, through all the way when sometimes when they post things, um, or what have you, and then so all of a sudden they're homeless, you know, with no support, or they are in school and their parents pulled the money, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So. I really feel that this program has made a very positive impact. I, I know that if I'm speaking from personal experience, it's definitely opened my eyes uh, to the various kinds of needs that is out there. Some of them are not employed. They can't get their feet under them. They don't have a physical place to stay. And then in order to even get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, they have to listen to somebody lecture them. You know, which is how it comes off to them. And this is for anybody, but especially with young adults, when they go through crisis, trust is the first thing to go. Um, and if you just come in to somebody and, is, and are saying things like, I, I want to help you, let's do this, let's, they're going to look at you like you're nuts. You know, you have to be able to take the time, take a breath, have a conversation. Find out where they're coming from and don't be like, well, I think this is the best thing for you to do. Because what they're going to go, it's just like this, and then you've not, you've not helped, you've actually hindered. And the likelihood that they'll ask any other adult for help has just been lessened. You wouldn't think it because Pittsburgh is not a huge city, uh, but we're right on par uh, with the national average. We get between 40 and 45 percent of our clients are GLBT. Um, one of the things that people get hooked up on uh, when they're talking about, well, how many queer, how many queer youth do you serve? Um, not everybody identifies as queer. It's their behavior. I don't know if you saw when you came in, but the hallway is full of stuff. Uh, that was a donation given by a community member who decided to take a personal collection from all of her friends. Um, that is soap and socks and blankets and coats and hats, 50 bags which will be sorted on Tuesday and then handed out on Wednesday. Um, and this is through um, stuff like our winter gear drive, which is going on right now. And winter gear is just like it sounds, socks, hats, scarves, uh, mittens, gloves, um, coats. Uh, you know, any of that stuff is welcome to be dropped off here anytime we are open. We are located at 210 Grant Street on the lower level, um, right on the corner of Boulevard of the Allies and Grant, and right right after Lydia's. You can find the Gay and Lesbian Community Center across the interweb by just looking up GLCC PGH. Our phone number is pretty easy. It's 412-422-0114. Um, our phone rings 24 hours a day. Uh, we try to answer within 24 hours. Uh, we always have somebody here to answer Monday through Saturday, 12 to 9. The Unsung crew heads out to Greensburg to visit States Rights' new space 
and gets musical. I'd like to welcome you to our brand new building. It's the old Fifth Ward Schoolhouse uh, in Greensburg. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful place, kind of fell into our laps. We heard about it through word of mouth that it might be available. Uh, it, was, uh, it was formerly owned by Adelphi and we talked to them and we became renters. And then one thing led to another and we were able to purchase the building. And it will soon become the David Mateer Center for the Performing Arts. Uh, he is a, a wonderful contributor and man who sadly has passed. But in his legacy, his family wanted to create something that was lasting, that he cared about. And he was a big supporter of stage right. He provided uh, scholarship money to our students and was so interested in what they did and, and, and how they used that experience. It was just a, he was just a great guy. Stage right is many, many things. It is at its heart a school for the performing arts and professional theater company, as, as is our title. Tagline is where dreams begin. And it really is that sort of a starting place for kids. If they want to be professional performers, that's great. We have a, a slate of professional actors who pass that gift along to them and help them achieve their dreams and audition for colleges and, and have that difference in their lives. And then there are kids who, who come here because they want to find confidence. They want to find the ability to stand up in front of a group of people. We created performance tracks for kids who want to become professional performers. And then we have our regular classes for kids who, who want to take class, become better dancers or singers or whatever it is. And then we discovered this whole audience of homeschool kids, kids who, uh, whose parents have chosen to keep them home and school them at home, and we're their cultural outlet. Uh, they come here and they, they perform a show, they produce a show, they, uh, they, they learn a show, they take classes in singing and dancing and acting, and then at the end of their 10 weeks they uh, perform something uh, that is their own. Uh, and, and that is, you know, that's one of the, the, the things that we do. We're always looking to reach out into the community and, and find an audience that is being underserved or needs something, and then we provide that with them. And that's why we've come up with other programs like Books Come Alive and our Kids Take a Stand Bully Outreach programs. I encourage everybody to go to our uh, website, www.stagerightgreensburg.com. That tells you all the things that we're doing, including our professional theater company, getting ready to produce Shrek at the Palace Theater, our upcoming children's theater productions of Little Red and La Bafana, and it also tells you all about our classes, our homeschool classes, our Books Come Alive programs, our outreach programs. Go to our Facebook page. That's a great way to get to know everybody. It's a very active page. Tons of people are on there. Tons of parents are on there. It's a great way to get a feel for what the organization is about. Uh, and, you know, we're an organization that is all about the community. If you have a need for our sensations, say, our performance troupe, to come to your event, call us. We'll, we'll work out a deal so that we can come perform for you. We don't turn anybody away. We always try to work with everybody within their budget because we feel as if us being out there in the community and providing what they need and providing them a service is the most important thing we do here. And of course we are a nonprofit organization, so if you're interested in becoming a volunteer or making a donation, visit our website or give us a call at 724-832-7464, that's 724-832-SING. Our doors are always open. Our executive director Chris Oros or myself, come talk to us. On songs Christopher Whitlatch is brave enough, are you? This year's Polar Plunge will take place at Heinz Field on Saturday, December 14th. Plungers are asked to raise $50 for the honor of plunging. Two chicken? You can still take part in all the fun. All proceeds benefit Special Olympics, and the event will cross the $1 million mark this year in support of the athletes. Visit pittsburghplunge.org for more details or to register. Soup Sega is back at the Bulgarian and Macedonian Educational and Cultural Center. Every Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon, the kitchen features 14 varieties of homemade Bulgarian soups and other specialties. Since 1999, they've been offering all-natural, low-sodium soups made from family recipes native to the various regions of Bulgaria. The menu includes hearty meat soups as well as vegetarian options, many of which are gluten and dairy-free. Soups are available in the quart and half-quart frozen pre-packaged containers. Just pop them in the microwave for a quick, healthy dinner or inexpensive lunch. They even sell Soup Sega gift cards. Details are available at the address on your screen. Speaking of gift cards, if you have a hard to buy for a person, you can give them the gift to charity with the Pittsburgh Foundation Charitable Gift Card. The cards are available in increments of $25, $50, or $100 to share with family, friends, and business associates. The program works like any gift card. Recipients of the cards may redeem them with the foundation directing the charity or charities to benefit, or the cards may be presented to any nonprofit organization in Western Pennsylvania for them to redeem with the foundation. To purchase, visit givingcard.pittsburghgives.org. 
You might have recognized Story Tags and Twitter handles during our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also reach us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag unsung PGH. Be sure to check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org, as well as video and audio versions on iTunes and YouTube. As always, thank you for watching Unsung, and be sure to share it with your friends. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. So I said I'ma crush it Call me the golden boy Cause it shine whenever I touch it Don't rush it The flow comes naturally Actually the whole hood after me Masterpiece I outrage